Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's July 27, 2018, and wouldn't you know it, another nuclear leak in my home state of South Carolina, approximately 45 minutes from where I live. Um, always stoked to hear about that. So I'm going to cover it in detail for you guys tonight. Um, of course, the article's already up on climateviewer.com. Uranium leak six foot hole Westinghouse nuclear processing facility in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm um, going to go through the details on this. I dug up the NRC reports on it and I made a map. So let's dig in. Um, everything that you're about to see is open source, free of charge. I only ask that if you want to support my work, you do so monthly on Patreon or one-time donation on PayPal. Would be greatly appreciated. Um, other than that, this is all for uh, you know, education's sake, and I appreciate you guys paying attention. Um, so i did this little graphic right here this is what the facility looks like it's actually the westinghouse electric corporation and this is the uh, uh new nuclear regulatory commission's event notification report for july 23rd 2018 um believe i have that right here and you could just do a search on the page for columbia It'll take you down there to it, and that's where I got this from. So you can see the date on that is July 12th, 2018. I actually understand that this happened on July 10th. So there's a little bit of a, uh, there you go right there, as was noted on July 10th, 2018. Uh, so it took them two days to actually inform the NRC that this occurred. Um, but this is all available on Climate Viewers Report. Um, you can see right here, here's the official explanation. For this event, notification was made by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control per this law, which requires 24-hour notification upon discovery of an unauthorized discharge into waters of the state, which caused and contributed to the excursion of a water quality standard. While it was not conclusively determined that the leak migrated to the groundwater, Columbia made notification based on uh, SED Heck. SED Heck was notified by phone on July 12, 2018. Quote, an equipment issue was noted on July 10th, 2018 during ongoing maintenance activities to repair the liner associated with a hydrofluoric acid spiking station number two in the conversion process area of the Columbia plant. While the polypropylene liner was removed for repair work, a crack was noticed in the epoxy coating covering the diked area of the spiking station. Upon further investigation, a hole approximately three inches in diameter was found penetrating the concrete floor into the soil beneath. Measurements taken reflect the depth of the hole is approximately six feet into the soil. Uh, several samples of the soil were obtained for immediate, from the immediate area the morning of July 11th, 2018. The samples were analyzed at the Columbia Plant Chemical Laboratory and the results obtained in the morning, July 12th. The highest measurements reported from the samples are 4,000 parts per million uranium and 24 parts per million fluoride with a pH of 2.84. That's pure acid. So basically a, 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 a pipe that contains acid um, ate away at the concrete in the floor made a three inch hole six feet deep um and you know being that i live near this area most people may not know this but in south carolina the water table is very close to the ground um i literally at the the last house i was living at i went and i dug a three foot hole um to put a mailbox up and six inches of the bottom of the hole was filled with water. 
So the fact that this is a six foot hole, um, it more than likely did impact groundwater. How far it migrated, um, that remains to be seen. Um, but regardless, here's the map. It's over on Climate Viewer 3D. And as you can see, um, this is the actual facility. Um, all of the same information is, uh, you know, in here that's in the article. You can just click on the icon. It is in the nuclear section down here, 2018 uranium leak. Um, and this is near Hopkins, South Carolina. Uh, let me change this to Bing so we can see the locations. But as you can see, this is downtown Columbia right here. That's the center of Columbia. So we're talking not far from the center of Columbia. That's our capital in South Carolina. Um, it's right off of um, Highway 48. And it doesn't appear to be near a major river as was reported by Strangers in Fiction News. Um, but that doesn't mean that, you know, groundwater migration can't occur. There is... Um, uh, the Congaree River right here and we're talking probably five to six maybe ten miles away um, so at least it wasn't direct directly near a river um, it's probably pretty localized and I'm not seeing a lot of you know neighbors um, you know it looks like it's a pretty grassy area with few neighbors but hopkins south carolina is right here so people in hopkins you might be might want to be more concerned about that than anybody else um, but regardless this is the facility in question um and i mapped that out in 3d so what i want to do is kind of go through just a little bit of the history of um you know these sorts of problems um yeah, I originally saw this on Stranger Than Fiction News. It was a live broadcast on Facebook. You can see that here. Um, their video is still available. So you can take a look at that. Link in the details. Shout out to them for um, bringing it to my attention. I appreciate that. Um, and then I got I dug up a bunch more information on that. Like the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, report and the page on this actual facility, Westinghouse Electric Company, LLC. And you can see down here their licensee report performance um, reviews. And, you know, these are all of the different reviews of the facility. You can go through those and see, you know, all their failures in the past. You can do this with any one of the nuclear facilities. It's almost always the same. Um, they they suck at what they do, and they, generally speaking, um, you know, they're 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 not very good at what they do. <laughs> all the nuclear facilities are leaking at one point or another. So. That's what I wanted to say about that. Um, their original source for this was the state. And as you can see right here, um, radioactive pollution leaked through Florida SE nuclear plant. I've got several other links at the bottom of this um, that you, everything you can, everything you need to know about the uranium um, at the Columbia leak. Anytime there's a leaking chemicals, there's a problem. Chemical leak raises concern and regulators uranium linked at SC nuclear plant. Um, full article there with a couple more details at the bottom. But let's just uh, let's just do a quick little history of nuclear issues around America because I see a whole lot of them. Um, shout out to everybody in facebook chat watching this tonight i really appreciate you guys staying up late with me what's up paul turner um good friend uh sam harper aobard is that how you say that what up texas love me some texas i was in austin just this january at the weather modification conference and have driven through there several times on my way to uh <laughs> Arizona so uh, thank you to everybody for tuning in tonight um, pretty awesome um, yeah so this is this has been a long history with uh, nuclear issues in South Carolina 
And it's, it doesn't just, you know, pertain to South Carolina. I'm going to cover a couple of different things real quick. Uh, the Russian woodpecker Chernobyl meltdown and ionospheric heating over the United States. Little did we know that weather modification had something to do with uh, the, the Chernobyl meltdown. So it turns out this ionospheric heater was accused of doing weather warfare over America. As Jack Anderson put it, the race for Star Wars weapons. Um, and this article is from Popular Communications. Is ELF able to manipulate the weather? Well, it is and was, and that's why we blew up the Chernobyl reactor. And as you can see here in this map, which is also available on Climate Viewer 3D, um, the Russian woodpecker is about 5.9 miles away from the Chernobyl reactor. So it's not a coincidence that the reactor had a meltdown. Um, more than likely, U.S. intelligence blew it up to shut that thing off. Um, no surprise here for me. All right. Um, so on to the next thing real quick. One second. All right, wrong button. Um, here we go. Did Metropolis get nuked last night? Now, this was about the Honeywell Uranium Hexafluoride Processing Facility. Um, and this is another case where we had a little bit of a nuclear, you know, meltdown release. And nobody wanted to talk about it. So, um, this was actually written by Christina Consolo Radchick, good friend of mine. Um... And I have that mapped as well. We can come over here and click on it. And you can see this is where it occurred. And this is the way the wind was blowing. I did a high split model using NOAA to figure out which way the wind was blowing. Um, but if you look right here, there's actual video of the event. You can still see it today. Amazing that it's still on video on, on Facebook. But there was you know, major gas venting. Um, of radioactive material it blew all over um, you know all over the countryside and nobody was warned um, in advance just happened um, always a problem when that sort of thing happens uh, and I got another video of that here let's see if this one's any better it's a different angle but similar case you can hear the alarms yes, going off property and you can see people running for There's cover um but yeah this is this is the way it goes whenever they have these nuclear events uh they rarely ever warn anybody um you know you just kind of be on top of it and and without proper monitoring equipment in your own backyard you'd be none the wiser so this happened uh what was it uh December 22nd, 2003 now. I've got this down as 2014. So yeah, this was 10, 27, 2014 uh, when it occurred. And the tar article for that was called Did Metropolis Get Nuked Last Night? Um, you know, they don't really tell us. In, in the same map, you'll see that I also have right here the Paducah Gaseous Diffusion Plant which is marked right here. Um, tornado hits Kentucky nuclear processing facility plant. Welcome to the Atomic City, as the little uh, logo there describes. And as you can see, um, they you know produce low uh, enriched uranium uh, Paducah gaseous diffusion plant. It says uh, 14 November, Russia has shipped the last batch of low enriched uranium which will end up in Kentucky, and there's the facility. Here's the NRC report on that. And, uh, you know, the tornadoes basically tore the place apart, ripped holes in the facility. Um, and, and we have nuclear processing plants like this all over America. And when things go wrong, they go very, very wrong. So that's always a problem. Um, and as you can see here in this article, NRC FEMA public meaning to revise 30-year-old nuclear emergency response plans, October 2013. Um, 
they really haven't changed anything at all. Uh, they don't have a response plan. Generally speaking, uh, the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the you know FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security, they're not going to warn you if there is a nuclear release, period. Um, they're going to tell you about it afterwards, and they're going to tell you that it really wasn't a big deal. And that's been the case in every single one of these that I've looked at. Um, it's always an after the fact, we'll tell you about it sort of thing. Um, American Fukushima, South Carolina's Oconee unit number one shut down due to radioactive leak. Now, this one's very scary um, because right here, this is the Lake Kiwi um, Dam and if it were to fail, the, jo the jo Joe Cassie Dam, if it were to fail, basically the Oconee nuclear power station would melt down similar to Fukushima. Period. Um, Fukushima, basically, there was a tidal wave. It hit the water pumps. It shut down the water pumps. The water pumps couldn't cool the, the nuclear reactor any longer. And that's why there was a meltdown. Now, the Oconee nuclear power plant is in South Carolina as well. You can see every nuclear reactor on the planet simply by clicking on here. And I'll do that right now. And I'll just turn them all on. And we'll zoom out and we'll come over here to South Carolina. And we'll go over to Oconee. Where is it? Right here. No, that's Robinson. Is that it? That's Catawba. That's the other one that we're about to talk about. Where am I at? Let me actually look over here. It might be easier for me to read. All right, South Carolina, this is it right here. There's Oconee. Okay, so this is the Oconee nuclear power plant, as you can see here on the screen. And right upstream from it is a dam. Come all the way up here, and there's the dam. And this is an earthen dam. If this dam were to break, we would have a Fukushima right here in South Carolina. It's very close to Clemson University, which is close to my heart. I love Clemson. And if this place were to melt down, you'd never be able to go to Clemson University ever again. Uh, similar to what happened in Fukushima. And as you can see, this is Lake Kiwi. Basically, all that water would rush down the, the river to the input you know intake valves at this uh facility and we would have a meltdown that's just period there's the intake valves right there um i'll show you the ones at fukushima in just a moment when we get to that so where were we let's go back up here so that's what i call the american fukushima um read all about it it's a big problem the NRC has known about it for quite some time. There have been no preparations taken to keep this from happening. It is still an issue, um, and it scares the hell out of me. All right, so then we say third tritium leak at Catawba nuclear station pollutes local waters. Um, back to the map. Now, Catawba is the one that I just showed. I believe it's here. No, where were we? Here. Yep, there's Catawba. And the Catawba nuclear power plant locally, I, you know, I'm in South Carolina. I'm in Sumter, South Carolina. I've heard so many stories about three-eyed fish and how that literally this water is hot. You know, like it's warm in the winter. Um, because basically they use these rivers to cool, you know, the, the nuclear reactors. So, um, tritium leaks have been found all around here. And as you can see, it's surrounded on both sides by, um, what is that? Lake Wiley. Um, and it's constantly le leaking in, you know, tritium. Tritium is a radioactive material. It's a bad thing. People don't care. You know, these nuclear reactors, they continue to operate every day, um, either belching nuclear radiation into the sky or leaking it into water, and little is ever done about any of it. 
So there's that. And that's the third tritium leak at Catawba Nuclear Station. Um, lots of details on that. And you can see that I've covered where some of the private wells were sampled and all of that. Um, lots of details. So, you know, take a look. This is just South Carolina I'm covering so far. The ma implications of the massive contamination of Japan with radioactive cesium by Stephen Sar star senior scientist and physician for social responsibility at the director of the university of missouri's clinical laboratory science program and helen caldicott from the foundation and fukushima symposium uh this is an excellent article you guys should read through it if you if you've ever heard of fukushima and you want to know all the details please go through this it's got some great slides um and explains you know what cesium is, how, you know, how it relates to radioactivity and other things, you know, gives you some, you know, diagrams of, you know, what it would be like uh, to compare it to other things, has some stuff in there about Chernobyl. Um, this is a pretty lengthy article. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I use this as a basis for a map which you can see right here, um, Fukushima Daiichi fallout. And that's where I modeled this in 3D. So shout out to Steven Starr for providing this information. But this is what the Fukushima Daiichi um, meltdown looks like in radioactive terms. These areas are now uninhabitable and will be for hundreds of years. Um, just like with Chernobyl, they have an exclusion zone. Nobody's going back there. That's that. Um, this is what your hometown could look like if you live near any one of these nuclear reactors. And as you can see, there are many of them. Um, there are 440 nuclear reactors worldwide. Um, several hundred in, in America alone. You can see all over Europe these nuclear reactors are everywhere each one of these nuclear reactors i went and i found a photo and put all the information in this would took me three to six months to create all of this um so feel free to dig into the map it's pretty fascinating stuff and scary as hell um back to the back to the story at hand so next thing up 10 years of fukushima radiation crossing the pacific ocean a lot of people have shared a lot of photos with me, um, you know, of radioactivity in the ocean coming from Fukushima. And, you know, the most common one I see is this one. This is not a radioactive map. This is actually a tsunami map. So to correct that, I wanted to find, um, you know, and you can see right here is the, the unedited version. This was everywhere on the internet for quite some time. Oh, this is radi Fu Fukushima radiation. No, that's a tsunami map, dude. And you can see right here, Japan tsunami, March 11, 2011. This is what it actually looked like. And I've got a great video on that. You can watch the time lapse on that. Um, where they actually show the dispersion of cesium and what it looks like over the next, you know, year, basically two years at the most. So when the Fukushima meltdown occurred, this is what we got. And then it'll slowly spread and continue to spread. It is still leaking to this day. The cesium is not the only thing that's leaking into the ocean. There's, you know, radioactive iodine, um, xenon, several other chemicals. The cesium being the, the most deadly, the most talked about. But regardless, as you can see, that reached our shores. Um, and there was very little said to the public about it. That's just the ocean. That doesn't account for what was spread worldwide in the air through the blowouts that occurred. So that's a big issue for me. Um, anyway, let's go back up here and let's just see, 
Yeah, what what did President Obama say about that? Because I'm I'm curious to get his take on this. This is an NBC News special report. Well, I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation <laughs> to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Well, there you go. There you have it. I mean, you know, the radioactive suit is priceless <laughs> um that's that's just absolutely hilarious but if you actually look there were um some reports uh some emails that were leaked from hillary clinton and hillary clinton told her staff literally to stay out of the rain um so while obama was on tv telling everybody hey nothing to see here nothing to worry about Go on, have your merry day. Um, Hillary was literally telling all of her staff, I'm going to be staying inside for the next couple weeks, and I suggest you all do the same. You can look it up. It's out there. Just a fact. Um, man, that's a funny video. They, John Masari, a friend of mine, he put him in a radioactive suit, and I just had to show you that it's hilarious. Um, and finally, this is my coup de gras, 10 most radioactive places on earth mapped out. And I, what I did was I went through and, you know, tried to, you know, I found an article for one that already had a list, but the list was just a couple text things. So what I did was I went and I mapped out each location and we'll go through them together. Hanford, USA. So you come over here, I'm going to clear the map off, now why do it? 10 most radioactive places on earth, click that thing right there, give it a second because it's a large map, and we'll start out with Hanford, this is the Hanford nuclear site, it's up in Washington, um, and as you can see, uh, this is some of the original very first test nuclear reactors. Maybe I should cut all these others off. They're going to get in the way. All right, so let's just let's turn all this off for now. All right, so as you can see, these are, you know, DOE Hanford site, 100B area. Um, several different, you know, nuclear test sites here, Hanford 400. There's actually a gravity hill right here, um, interestingly enough, and a... Uh, there's a nuclear reactor right out here and a gravitational wave detector nearby that's powered by um, something over here. Uh, regardless, pretty fascinating site. The Hanford site has had numerous leaks over the years. Um, it's constantly leaking, people downwind, um, having to deal with this. Uh, you know, it's, it's constantly blowing crap everywhere. Um, and then what we do is we come over here to uh, Italy and what you'll see is um, right off the coast of Greece that the entire Mediterranean is covered in all these yellow dots. Well, interestingly enough, uh, the mafia <laughs> of all people we're using it as a dumping site. And I can't pronounce that Indra Drangheta Syndicate of the Italian Mafia. Um, an unknown amount of nuclear waste has been dumped in the Mediterranean. There's the original map, my old version of the map. But basically, they've been dumping nuclear waste all over the Mediterranean for years and years and years. Um, then we go to the Somali coast. Now we've all heard about the Somali pirates. Well, one of the reasons why they're all pirates right now is because people have been dumping nuclear um, waste on their beaches for years. And you can see some of these locations here, um, toxic waste, 
uh, you know, Mogadishu, uh, nuclear reactors literally washing up on the beach, nuclear and toxic waste here. Um, basically, you know, the, the, the powers that be, the large co um, companies, they just go down there and dump it right off the coast, you know. Um, this is Somalia, pirate hometown, you know, and their beach is covered in, guess what, nuclear waste. So, what do you end up with? You end up with pirates out here in these areas, and especially in this strait, you know, trying to take over these boats that are, you know, dumping waste constantly. Um, you know, can't say I blame them. If, uh, you know, I saw large ship containers pulling up with nuclear reactors and trying to dump them on uh, Myrtle Beach, I think I'd be inclined to jump in a boat and jump out and go out there and do something about it. So I can't say that that's the full story, but it's definitely part of the story, and it's definitely not part of the story you're going to hear anywhere else. Um, anyway, next up, Mayak Chemical Combine in Russia. Um, some pretty scary stuff about that there. Um, you know, it's a nuclear test site for Russia, for nuclear weapons, things like that. Um, Sellafield, UK. Plutonium from Sellafield um, in all children's teeth. And uh, you can see that is on the map as well. Um, it's over here. Ooh, I went way out. Let's come up here to the UK. This is the Sellafield facility here. And as you can see, there's a pipe right here that literally runs out to the ocean. There's the pipe. And they just dump the radioactive waste just like Fukushima. And that's why the Irish Sea is one of the most radioactive places on Earth. Can you believe it? So there you go. That's that's Sellafield, and right next door is Calder Hall Nuclear Power Site, um, and still dumping radioactive waste to this day. And that's pretty much how they do it. They don't really care about you know the nuclear waste. They figure once it's in the ocean and it sinks to the bottom, hey, you know, it'll it'll all just go away. So why not let it just roll? Um, next up is the Siberian Chemical Combine. Yes, that's a two-headed cow. Some graphic material in this one, guys. Um, and that Siberian Nuclear Waste Site, you can see it. Both of these are over in Russia. Um, there is semi-plantings. This is the Siberian Chemical Combine that we're looking at right now. And you can see the facility here. Um, pretty hard to find this stuff. I can tell you that much. Um, but different locations on there marked with little white dots. But that's the full facility. Um, and the other one, the Mayak Chemical Combine, is right here. And as you can see, there's that. And this is literally, uh, you know, ash disposal pond. Um, just filled with radioactive waste. Uh, right here, fizzle material storage facility. And that's the actual uh, Mayak site. And uh, I see 100 tons of radioactive waste were released by an explosion contaminating a massive area. Gotta love nuclear, man. It's everywhere. Of course, there'll be people on um, the internet who'll tell you, we can't even crack an atom and all nuclear bombs are, are fake, but those people can kiss my ass. Um, period. Moving along. The Polygon in Kazakhstan. Oh my God, look at that guy's face. That poor fool uh, was irradiated by nuclear weapons testing. So... Where is that? That's right down here. Um, and you can see it's right here. So, doesn't look like a lot going on here. It's just a test site, right? Well, once you come up here to the top and you click on 2053 nuclear test explosions, this is a very, very large file. 
I'm going to give this just a moment to load up. Boom. Now you can understand why this is one of the most radioactive places on Earth, as you can see. These are all nuclear test explosions that occurred, and there are many. So, basically, all of these nuclear bombs went off on this test site. And this test site is actually small compared to the one in Nevada and the one that Russia has up top. But take a look, people. That's a lot of nuclear explosions. 2,053 nuclear explosions total in this map. Um, and this semi uh site is one of the most radioactive places on Earth as a result. You can come over here to North America, to Nevada, and see exactly the same thing. This is our Nevada test site. And as you can see, here are the holes in the ground. They are still there today. I don't know why they're not sticking to the ground right now. Something's going on with my, my 3Ds. The 3Ds are messing up there. They moved over here for some reason. Let's come down here and uh, let's turn on the 3D terrain and see if they pop back into place. Or if I break the damn thing. Because we're doing this live. This is a very large map. I think it's like 10 megabyte for this map. So let's see what happens. Give it just a second. This is pretty fascinating stuff. But 2,053 nuclear explosions in it. You know, the good news is all of our parents aren't completely, like, fried. So, you know, they lived through it. Um, yeah, I locked it up. <laughs> we'll just wait. See what happens. It may come back. It may not. I've got a lot going on right now. What, Johnny Five? You can't be in my video. My kitty cat wants to be in the video. Oh, there we go. Things seem to be popping into place now. With some 3D terrain. And let's zoom in there. But just on the Nevada test site, there's more than a, a thousand nuclear explosions alone. Um, and the people that were affected by that are known as the downwinders. You can Google that. Um, but, you know, it's pretty horrible. Let's zoom in there. Ooh, too far. And you can see these nuclear test sites. They match up perfectly now. <clears throat> Thank you for snapping to terrain. But nice little circles on the ground where the explosions occurred. Um, big, you know, divots in the ground. That's Nevada. You know, it didn't make it on the person's list from the article that I used originally, but I've learned a lot since then. And of course, that's not all we did. Uh, we also tried to blow up space. You can come over here and look at Starfish Prime right here and see that we were doing you know upper atmospheric nuclear explosions all the way into the ionosphere trying to blow holes in the ionosphere with nuclear explosions um and finally the russians they tried to nuke the arctic you can see it up here i guess they were trying to melt away the ice so they can get to the you know oil and gas but regardless they did something very similar you can see all of their explosions up here. That's kind of funky. Uh, but regardless, nuclear explosions, big problem. Let me turn this map off. Very large map. Give that just a second. We'll get back to the, to the article real quick. All right. And then, so that's the polygon in Kazakhstan. A um, little photo of that. That probably would have been easier to show you than doing all that with the map. Um, Ilo Su, Kyrgyzstan. This is a mining operation. Basically, they've gone and blown the top off of these mountains. And um, when you do that, radioactive uh, waste will leach down into the city. 
So this was listed as one of the most radioactive places on Earth. Um, it's, of course, on the map, too, but it's kind of boring. Chernobyl, Ukraine. That is a huge tumor on his butt. Oh, my God. Um, Chernobyl, we, you know, I briefly covered it earlier with the, um, with the whole Russian woodpecker thing. But you can see the Chernobyl meltdown um, in 3D on here as well. Let me get myself reorganized here. And come over here. And that's how big the Chernobyl meltdown is. The Chernobyl reactor is actually right in here. And what you see is two hot zones. This is where the Chernobyl reactor was. And the um, you know, Russian woodpecker. And then right here is another very hot spot. And what's right downwind of that? Moscow. And the reason why there are two hot spots is because Moscow used weather modification to make sure that all of the rainfall landed here in Belarus and never made it to Moscow. So nuclear meltdown at Chernobyl occurs here. Rain's going to go towards Moscow. They do heavy weather modification right here. Most of that radioactive fallout fell here. To this day, if there are forest fires in this Chernobyl exclusion zone, um, radioactive material is released into the air again. Um, still occurs to this day. So pretty fascinating stuff. So I'm going to turn this off real quick so that we can just see that real quick up close. Chernobyl meltdown. And there's the actual reactors in Pripyat. And here is the explosion. We'll open that image in a new tab real quick, let you see that up close. But that's what the meltdown looked like. Boom. Um, they ended up putting a dome over top of it and then the dome started to fail and then they put a new dome on top of that. Um, but when these things go, they go hard. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, if you're living next to a nuclear uh, power plant, at any moment you could end up like this. And it ain't fun. And then finally, the king of them all, Japan, Fukushima, the ruiner of the Pacific Ocean. Um, we can uh, fly over there and take a look at that thing too. Fukushima Daiichi meltdown. Click right here. It'll take you to the reactors. Uh, you can see these are the intake valves, similar to the ones in Oconee. Um, you know, the tidal waves took them out because they couldn't cool the reactors anymore uh, they ended up blowing up got photographs of what that looks like here here and here um, and of course it was uh, you know it ended up um, causing a gas buildup which exploded uh, put particles into the sky went worldwide um, radioactive iodine and cesium um, you breathed it Despite what Obama said, it, would, it covered America, especially the West Coast. Uh, my family took precautions not to purchase any fruits or vegetables from the West Coast for, um, you know, a couple of years afterwards, at least. Um, stopped eating tuna, to say the least. But bioaccumulation occurs in the largest animals. So the larger the fish, the more radioactive material it'll consume. Um, and that's a bad thing. Um, all right, and then we got the meltdown here, and then, uh, you know, I have the radioactive seawater on here as well, but, you know, let's just leave it at that. Oh, we didn't mention the Three Mile Island meltdown. That occurred over here in America. You can see the radioactive, uh, let's see where this is, it's up in Philadelphia area, right? Like Pennsylvania. But anyway, radiation emissions and cancer incidents within 10 miles of Three Mile Island. Uh, we had a meltdown here in America. People got cancer. It was bad. Um, and that's, that's the threat we all live under. If you really want to dig into a whole lot more, I've got 50 nuclear nightmares worldwide. And you can look at those. 
more stories of nuclear horror flick um you know that you can then you can shake a stick at you can go through them obviously like hiroshima nagasaki um things like that but basically um you know this sort of stuff that happened in Colombia, it happens every week um many of you probably follow any news e-n-e news um dot com they're they're one of an excellent source for that um rso edis um if you guys haven't checked them out they're pretty much on top of this sort of thing as well um i have a nuclear section the nuclear reactor map where i go through my four main reasons why you shouldn't have uh, nuclear waste at all but electricity is but a fleeting byproduct from nuclear reactors the actual product is forever deadly radioactive waste so for anybody who wants to tell you that nuclear reactors are green energy understand that the waste they produce kills people the meltdowns when they occur they make it to where you can never live there again and the the, the waste they produce is used to build nuclear bombs um and is you know the half-life of some of this stuff is thousands of years so unless we plan on taking all of this nuclear waste and putting it in rockets and shooting it at the sun um it's going to get stored on in the, in the bottom of the ocean um all kinds of horrible places and uh you know other places that process this you know they you know end up screwing up finding holes in pipes um late friend of mine bill nar um he actually worked in the nuclear industry and he told me a horror story that basically goes like this <clears throat> um there are pipes you know that connect just like what happened with this uh you know westinghouse facility and these you know chemicals the steam that's generated in these pipes is under high pressure it's very hot it's intense and um he actually saw a group of guys boil to death because of a blowout of one of these pipes and uh basically he you know was working at a facility after this event happened and he saw a guy working on a pipe and the guy was literally just taking metal and welding it over the outside of the pipe and he asked him what he was doing he says well you know this pipe is getting thin so we want to make it thicker so it doesn't blow out that's like putting a band-aid on something i mean it's a metal band-aid and most of these facilities 30 50 60 years old um you know if you look at the nrc reports you know about people getting drunk on the job poor hiring practices the list goes on and on um there we are not protected from the nuclear industry at all by the nuclear regulatory commission there is no protection currently for um this sort of thing and you know that's why it's my hope to one day you know bring accountability to all of this with my environmental modification accountability act um and part of that act is to to build sensors um to detect weather modification but in addition to that um hopefully the sensors that I, you know i intend to create they're going to do rainwater sampling and have cameras pointed at the sky to see your weather over your house but i hope to include radioactive monitoring um with that you know there are websites out there like safecast and um you know a couple other radio radiation monitoring sites but you can't trust the government because during the fukushima daiichi meltdown they shut off epa's radnet they just turned it off because they didn't want the public to be alarmed um and that's just completely unacceptable so you know as they put it you know the the fukushima media coverage may be harmful one report in a UK newspaper, The Independent, quoted a scientist who predicted more than a million would die and that the prolonged release of radioactivity from Fukushima would make 
health effects worse than those from the sudden release experience to the Chernobyl reactor in Ukraine. We've got to stop these sorts of reports from coming out because they're really upsetting the Japanese population, says Jerry Thomas of the Imperial College of London, who is attending the meeting. The media has a hell of a lot of responsibility here because the worst post Chernobyl effects were the psychological consequences and this shouldn't happen again. I want that to sink in. So the reason that the media doesn't tell you when things like this Westinghouse uranium leak occurred till after the fact is they don't want people panicking. They don't want people freaking out. But at the same time, they're also not allowing anybody to take any kind of precautions against nuclear radiation releases that occur. So public notice should be paramount. Uh, warning the public to you know take precautions, stay indoors, um, you know watch out for the water you're drinking. If it you know we have a release into the lakes and streams, none of that ever occurs. Hasn't occurred in the seven years I've been studying and mapping this sort of thing, and that's why I personally hate nuclear power. Um, and I hope that you will too. So. That's my report on this uranium leak and, you know, all things nuclear. You guys can check that out by going to my nuclear reactor section on climateviewer.com by coming up here to the top pollution, nuclear pollution fact, or you can see all the articles on that by going to the nuclear section right here and scrolling through all of these articles that I just showed you in addition to a few more. Um, you know, nuclear is a problem. It isn't going away anytime soon. Um, and I hope that you guys have found this video educational. I hope that you will share it with other people. Um, warn them about this, you know, nuclear problem, um, in your backyard. Definitely share the map. It's at climateviewer.org. There is a 3D map and a 2D mobile map now. So if you guys can't run the 3D map, everything I just showed you is available over here on um, Climate Viewer Mobile. And just click them on like this. Uh, similar deal, has a nice little pop-up, um, works on mobile devices, um, and you know it's all free of charge. So that being said, um, if you guys want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. I would greatly appreciate that. Or if you want to help me fix my thyroid, I live downwind of this nuclear uh, wasteland of South Carolina. And I suffer from Graves' disease. I have a swollen thyroid, as you can see at the moment. And I'm trying to fix it naturally. Uh, the endocrinologists want to cut my thyroid out. But that's at GoFundMe.com slash FixMyThyroid. Any donations would be greatly appreciated. I'm trying many different methods um, to fix my own thyroid. And thyroid illness is definitely related to nuclear ingestion. Um, I live downwind of uh, Shaw Air Force Base as well. So there's your double whammy. I live in a state full of nuclear reactors, as you can see here. Not to mention the Savannah River Nuclear Site, Savannah River National Lab, and a whole bunch of other nuclear processing facilities. I hope to map them all out one day. Um, all of the other facilities like this one I just found out about today, the Westinghouse one. Um, but you can see that over here on Cloud Viewer Mobile as well. Um, share the map, share the article, talk about nuclear, talk about the truth about nuclear, that there is no warning process, that if it goes off in your neighborhood, your neighborhood is gone forever, and that the waste is never going away. Um, and all of this is used not to boil water, it's used to make nuclear bombs, period. So I appreciate your support, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks everybody in Facebook chat. I'm going to scroll through your, uh, your uh, comments after the video and I'll respond to them. Um, but thank you guys for hanging out with me and, you know, 
please uh, continue to support climateviewer.com and share this message. It's important. Um, I haven't talked about nuclear in quite some time. Um, and, you know, it's probably about time I did. Um, so with this information comes power. And uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So all I ask is that when you do attack these nuclear fools and you call up near nuclear facilities and ask them for their, you know, reports and, and see what a shitty job they're doing, that you remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.